Uh, my name is Jack Terrycloth, and I am the um, uh, living saint of World Inferno Friendship Society. <laughs> I was a teenage punk rocker in uh, suburban New Jersey, and desperately didn't want to be in suburban New Jersey any longer. So I uh, uh, lied to a band and said I played bass and went on tour with them when I was like 16. And I've pretty much been touring since then, and that was a long time ago. <laughs> My very first show was at CBGB's, that was a rock club over on the Bowery, just heard of it. and I took the path train in with, I'm going to name drop just shamelessly here, <laughs> no I won't actually, I took the path train in with a couple of my friends and uh, went, uh, saw Suicidal Tendencies in 1984. It was a terrifying and wonderful experience. I had, I had a fake baptismal record to say I was 16 because I was really 14, and one of I told this story before, but it's so great, I'll tell it again. And one of the opening bands was from New Jersey. They were called Bodies in Panic. You've probably never heard of them. But, but they, we got to talking, and they gave me a ride home. So uh, it, that was a wonderful introduction to punk rock. Um, I was in a band called Sticks and Stones, who were from New Jersey. I'm not going to say minorly popular, actually actively unpopular. But we used to play a lot. And um, I wrote a song uh, for them that they uh, didn't, didn't want to play, and I said, no, no, right. this is a really good song. And we put it off for a year, and I kept playing it at home by myself, and I said, no, really, we, we have to do the song. And they said, no, and so I said, right, I'm going to start another band that will play the song. And uh, it's a song the Golden Crown plays first every night, so <laughs> the tattoos fit. There's no design is completely just happening. I mean, kids make most of the things they do it themselves. Like, uh, Suddenly glitter has become a trend, as you can tell, because uh, I just got back from the show last night and I am still covered in glitter, which I like, but I think glitter is great. It does not go away, it doesn't matter how much you bathe, you will have glitter on your face for days afterwards. Um, there was no design, I think it's the music inspired people to dance, which is great, and uh, dancing inspires fun, and fun usually involves drinking, and, and kissing. There's an awful lot of kissing, actually. The author, uh, Hakeem Bey, he's, he's a little obscure, he wrote a book called Temporary Autonomous Zone. It uh, means that you just, the people in the room or in the park change the state of, of, of the entire experience. Um, that is what happens at World of Furniture shows. And it's really as much, if not more, the, uh, the, the crowds. Um, doing an honest word impetus for it, but the kids, the kids do most of the work. Right. All I have to do is remember the words and show up. I mean, we had to do it ourselves. I mean, we actually built our own recording studio. We uh, started out putting out our own records. I mean, we've worked with labels since then. But actually, this new record, I think, we're putting out ourselves again. Um, people I've, I've met that really inspired me. Um, the band New Model Army we got to tour with. They had also started from the roots of, I don't know if you know, uh, T.V. Smith from the adverts. He um, uh, plays 180 shows a year just by himself, does it, and it's packs houses all across Europe. Yeah. Don't have a backup plan. <laughs> uh, having energy is just, it's, it's, it's so much fun that my, my face hurts, I, I smile sometimes so much <laughs> on stage. Uh, I, you, ha you have to love to do it because Someone asked me that the other night, I guess some kids, like, oh, what do, you, what do you suggest about being a musician? I was like, I suggest you don't do it. <laughs> because A, it'll be more competition for me. But, I mean, if you don't like any aspect of it, if you don't like rehearsing, if you don't like sitting in a bus for eight hours a day, if you don't like crappy uh, gas station food, you shouldn't do it. You have to really love, love that you're there. Most of us don't live here anymore. Um, uh, I still do, our guitar player still does, our producer, uh, one of our piano players still does, but everyone else has moved to Chicago, Boston, back to Jersey. Um, I mean, definitely, I, I'm lucky enough that my rate hasn't gotten up. Of course, now I say this, it'll probably we will. Uh, yeah, neighbors changed a lot. I mean, for example, this bar wasn't across the street from my house anymore, uh, before. Well, uh, um, gentrification is what gentrification is, everyone knows what it does. Uh, yeah, when I moved here, it was all families, and uh, there was not a bar. There was one bar like four blocks that way. Now there's a bar across the street from my house. 
which obviously I'm taking advantage of. Never been able to get into Russia. But we have, we've, we have tours booked there, but they won't do these visas. Don't know why. I know why. You know why too. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm always disappointed by that. Um, we played Helsinki a lot, which you know is very close to uh, uh, Russia, and cute kid the uh, Russian punks take a, uh, the ferry over to see us play in Helsinki, which is very very touching. Um, but I, I, yeah, I'd love to travel through uh, more of Asia. Um, never, never been to Japan. Not sure why. We talked about it a couple times. Never been to Australia. I'd like to go there. But, uh, but the Russian thing is, you know, like, like, like three times we had, we had tourist books and we got to the border and they're like, oh, oh hell no. <laughs> of course, that was true for Canada for a very long time as well. <laughs> but but now, now we're okay with Canada. Don't know why that changed. Don't care. Do you know that park down on the East River? It's, it's an amphitheater. I don't know what it's called. Um, um, there's an amphitheater down the, by the East River, like, oh gosh, around 17th Street or something. I would love to do a home house there when you're, it's, it's, it looks like you're in Greece and the water's there and the boats are going by. Um, maybe we'll do that this year. It would be difficult to charge admission when that gets you. <laughs> as unpunk as it sounds, money becomes increasingly uh, more important the more popular you get. Because you have to carry around more people and, and so on and so forth. So if there's one bad thing about being successful is it actually costs you more money than being not successful. Yeah. It's, uh, it's called uh, This Packed Funeral. Yeah. We've, like, leave, leave, we're releasing it uh, a single a month until it's done and then we're going to release the whole um, album at once. It's, an, it's another story arc. It's about a... Uh, it's about a lady punk, uh, punk rock singer who was in a vaguely popular band in the 80s. Um, and she dies, and it's about her funeral, and uh, all her friends, band members, and fans that haven't seen each other in 20 years uh, talk about her. So it's a bunch of songs about a, uh, about a woman named uh, Grace Talicious. And it, every, every song is a different point of view about Miss Talicious. It is the end of the ecstasy. Uh, um, Write happy music about, with lyrics that make you cry. I mean, that's kind of what life is all about. Yeah. <laughs> At least for me. <laughs> you already know the words. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for the internet. <laughs> in, in fact, it, it's funny since we're still working on it. Sometimes I, the, the words are not done yet, so I change them, and they know the, they know the words from the night before. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't get that wrong. It's new. I rewrote it. <laughs> Guys, you know, part of the trick of doing this for so long is not planning anything and just insisting on doing it. Um, to play theaters, to uh, uh, keep writing um, albums with story arcs and perhaps doing a story arc and then doing like a, a normal set afterwards, which is what we did with the Peter Lorre thing. Um, but once again, if I thought too much about this, I would probably quit. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think about it. Um, we're on tour forever. Um, we are finishing this record. We said we still know whether we're putting it out or someone else is putting it out, but in this day and age, does it matter who puts the record out? The record labels pretty much are sure all, all going out of business. Um, I'm trying to enjoy myself. Um, I think we might actually get to Japan this year, which I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Um, yeah, what is it? we're in April and I haven't paid the rent yet. Shit. Um, <laughs> uh, just, um, uh, we were already working on a new record. So, I mean, we, the, the one that we're putting out slowly isn't, isn't out yet. So we're probably going to have, like I said, that record's done, but we're just releasing it in, in segments. So probably only a month after, uh, this pack funeral comes out, we'll have an, another record out, which means we'll be on tour forever. Well, you know, I don't listen to contemporary music almost at all. Um, I've been listening to um, English street songs from the 1500s lately for uh, another project I'm doing. It's very, very funny. It's, it's, uh, it's usually traditional melodies, but they're selling things like. Get your oysters, get your oysters, fresh oysters here and 
difficult um, to find that material? Yeah. It's, it, it, big part. Is it difficult to find that material? Um, uh, no, there's a thing called the internet. Uh, uh, no, <laughs> uh, no, it's not. It wasn't hard to get at all. It, it's, I, think, I think it's called The Greatest Hits of 1596. It, it is actually called that. I'm trying to think of another one. And then there's some very bawdy songs about women, uh, or people, selling various services. If you want in... Uh, so that's what I've been listening to. I'm trying to, I, I would love to plug some friend of mine at this point. Um, what are you guys from around here? Do you remember that band, um, My Favorite? Uh, they're from Long Island. Um, uh, they, their new band is called uh, The Secret History. Uh, they're great, very, uh, very, very glam rock. Very, uh, actually, they uh, also, uh, very, they're very, very sad. You know, it's, it's good music to listen to uh, late at night when you're like... <laughs> There's a band I like from Oakland, California, which is weird because I hate California, called the Phenomenots. They are great. Plus, their name is so much fun to say. Phenomenot. Phenomenot. And all their songs are about science. Uh, and they have a spaceship. I, I'm not even kidding. Look them up. The Phenomenots. They're brilliant. They're, they're probably the one... Uh, contemporary band that I actively listen to. Yes, we do when we try and have uh, like-minded people at every uh, stop. It's much more interesting when we are the opening act because we get thrown on with bizarre bands, <laughs> which is also fun. Yeah. Um, um, you know, we always... Uh, 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 oh, we do pick our opening acts mm -hmm. and have... Uh, like-minded peoples. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into politics, but you know, crazy ass anarchist, uh, 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 pro queer. Uh, we're a uh, Tom Waitsy sounding band that from a, this from your neighborhood will probably be opening for us. Uh, we try to go out to the unknown because I don't ever need to play Germany again. I've probably played Germany more times than I played the United States, and they're what, they're lovely kids and they they're, give us an awful lot of money. <laughs> If I never play Braunschweig again, that's okay. Sorry, Braunschweig. Uh, we, uh, oddly enough, that was the only place that my previous band, Sticks and Stones, who were a very lovely bunch of punk rockers who I miss very much. Hi, guys. Uh, for some reason, we were popular there, so uh, World in Front got popular there very, very, very quickly. For a very long time, we were more popular there than we were in the States, and which is great, but then you're that guy like, yeah, I'm popular in France. Uh, so we, uh, we actually just... We actually actively decided to uh, concentrate on trying the states more than Europe, even though Europe is more lucrative. And at one point, I decided I'm not going to write about the way I feel about anything anymore. I'm going to write about actual stories, or the way other people feel, feel about things. Um, so yes, that, that I did plan that one in advance. Because really, who cares if Jack Terrycloth is depressed one day of the week? But. Everyone cares if Peter Lorre is depressed, or how Peter Lorre feels about World War II. Or, I mean, that's just much more interesting to, to write about. Um, everybody writes. There's some songs I, uh, I wrote by myself. There's some songs that other people rip, uh, have written by themselves. I, for the most part, write, write the lyrics, but even people have even contributed lyrics. Um, it's, it's wildly different. And I, it, every song is wildly different, and I think that's why um, we've been able to be so prolific. I mean, there's so many bootlegs out there that we never even bothered to release. Um, we write an awful lot of material and not all of it gets used. Unfortunately, you have to rehearse a lot. Uh, but everyone's busy and we're, you know, we're all getting older. People are having children for Christ's sakes. Um, and yeah, now that uh, we've all, all been praised out of Brooklyn, people have started moving away. So um, how do we deal with it? It's extremely difficult. Thank you for asking. <laughs>